Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette, this is Board Game Inquisition, where we love giving you insights and information about the board games you might just want to have in your own collection someday. Are you in the mood for a little bit of romance? Well if so, welcome to the Kickstarter preview for the very lovely Dungeon Date. Dungeon Date is a game about building a stylish outfit and using it to romance, befriend, or slay a dungeon full of monsters. On your turn, you reveal an action card, so you can interact with a monster, and match symbols to befriend, romance, or slay them. Of course, all for loot. You can use this Dilo Monster to update your look and even backstab your friends and claim their monsters. The winner is the person with the most points from monsters and style symbols at the end of the game. Thing one, what's this game all about? So Dungeon Date will fall into the category of other similar dungeon titles where you go deep into the bowels of the earth and you slay monsters and take their equipment to improve yourself to slay further monsters. Um, however, this game takes an interesting twist in which there are other ways to defeat monsters other than using your weapons. So for example, you can both befriend and romance monsters in this case. Um, and how you do this is based basically on your outfit and your style, because you need to be dressed appropriately to be able to deal with and interact with specific type of monsters. Um, I think this is a really fun and innovative take on Dungeoneering. Um, I love the idea that you don't have to kill a monster if you don't want to. There is another way around this altogether. Um, and I really feel as well like the mechanics and the theme blend together rather nicely as you're scrambling to equip different outfits using your style of monster um, so that you can you know engage with further monsters. Um, like overall this is a really fun and entertaining theme and a fresh one too. I, I really enjoyed it. Now for similar games to this I can't help but be reminded of Munchkin where you're trying to scramble to get as much of your equipment as possible to help you take down the monster but this one definitely has its own unique sense of style and a different approach to how we normally deal with monsters in dungeons. Thing two, what kind of actions are you going to be performing on your turn? So this is definitely a tableau builder meets set collection kind of affair. And on your turn, there'll be a series of monsters that you're gonna to wanna to capture to get their loot. Um, and they will require specific symbols depending on how you want to interact with them. And it's up to you to have those symbols in your equipment sets so that you can claim them for yourself. Um, to be fair, everything about this game is simple and straightforward. Um, it's all you know laid out nicely in front of you and fairly obvious. But it does have a couple of really intelligent touches I thought I should tell you about. Um, so the first of these being that when you choose your action on a turn, it's secret. You have a little handful of um, actions to, to determine which part of the board you're going to interact with. So monster A, B, C or the stylo monster. Um, and you do that secretly, which I think is cool. Um, which also means that you can somehow end up, you know, in battles for, you know, monsters and things like that. And you can fight other players. Um, and I think that's a really cool idea that you keep it secret so that not everybody knows. The other important feature of this is that whatever action you've chosen stays down on the board for a round. It doesn't go back into your hand immediately, meaning you can't perform the same actions back to back for the whole game. And I thought that was a really nice touch, actually. Um, the second thing I'm going to note is the actual style of Mancer itself is really, really clever because, yeah, this is a game in which you're going to want to change your equipment often. Um, and so you're going to need to do this every so often. And I like the fact that it reminded you that there was end game scoring during the game. So maybe you might want to pick that up. It might be important. I kind of like that poke in the ribs. And finally, the other action we've not talked about is backstabbing. Yes, there's a backstabbing action in which you can kill one of your opponent's monsters and add it to your own pile. Um, 
that's pretty serious stuff, right? Um, you can see why I got the Munchkin vibe right there. Um, it's interesting how it's done because if somebody, you know, manages to take a monster from you, then they'll have a spite token, which means the next time they go to do something, they're doubly strong. Um, and so it's a good way, I think, to prevent somebody from getting too many sets of the same monsters to get loads of points and stuff, or also just a way to annoy each other. But I do think it was an intelligent design choice to go in there um, to give you a way of interfering with each other. It's the, the only really majorly interactive part of the game, and I think it definitely needed, needed it. Um, overall, this is a really fun and light and entertaining game, and it's put together rather well. Thing three on the table. So this one is definitely a flurry of cards and there's been an effort made, you know, to have them tidy on the table with these kind of cardboard strips which indicate where your cards are supposed to be placed. Um, it's cute and all, but I don't know how arresting this game is when looking at it from the table. Um, the good news is, however, it's very quick to set up and quick to put away. And for two of us, it takes about 20 minutes to play. And that's the special two player version only mode, which I really, really enjoyed and appreciated. Thank you very much. It just shortened the game a little bit from the, the fuller version. Now, replayability wise, well, you're basing this all on two decks, the decks of items and the decks of monsters. And no, you don't see all of them each time you play. Um, however, I think the more you play with it, yeah, you're going to see everything and become more familiar with it. And that's either going to be a positive or a negative for you. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? Um, so firstly, note that this is a prototype copy, meaning not everything here is set in stone. But I'll talk about what I've got. Um, and the first is the box art. Um, I love, 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 love this. It's just so bright and colourful and fun. Like, it, it's just exciting. Um, and while the art in the game is very, very lovely, it does not reflect the art on the cover, which I thought was kind of disappointing that it didn't carry through. Um, there's a really nice use of colours and pastels and kind of fun and whimsy with all of the cards in the game. And I think it's just, it's a really fun aesthetic to do for a dungeon game. I, I really, really liked it. Um, yeah, you kind of just admit that this game just has its own sense of style. Thing five, is this game actually any good? Well, in all honesty, I've kind of fallen in love with kind of the theme and the idea of dungeon date. Um, like, it's not every day you can say that you go down into the dungeon, you interact with the monsters, you get their items, you can come out on top, all without necessarily having to be violent. It's pretty unusual. I just think we're so used to the idea that we should be looking for the weapon with the best stats to kill things that for me anyway it felt very refreshing to suddenly look at my equipment in terms of somebody other than myself because in this game your equipment is for what the monsters want and by proxy it kind of means that the monsters are something more than just objects for you to slash your way through. They have kind of wants and requests and desires in some cases and I found that kind of interesting. Like the notion of swapping your clothes like you would normally, I guess in any dungeon scenario, you know, where you're swapping your equipment to be the most optimal. Um, the notion here carries through that, yes, you're swapping your equipment and stuff, but not to make you better, but to um, be able to kind of befriend and, you know, romance others. And it's, it's kind of a fascinating thought, isn't it? Um, yeah, I really liked where this is going. I like that I could look at dungeons and think about it differently. I also like that we could look at monsters and look at them differently too. That there was more than one way to do things. Um, and I, yeah, I really, really liked it. Now, on a whole, this game is pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. Um, there's very little progression here. Um, if anything, the game very much remains on the surface. There's no deep strategic thinking here. Um, however, it is very fun. It's very well put together um, and it's dungeons done differently. And I really like that. Do I think you should have dungeon date in your collection? Well, I think if you've not been a big fan of previous dungeon titles, well then this one's definitely a departure from that. It's fun, it's bright and it's innovative. So it's well worth looking at. And it's coming to Kickstarter on March the 16th. So keep your eyes peeled for it. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos? Or if you've got any questions or queries about dungeon date, why not shout them off in the comment box below? And until next time, tune in again for some more short and informative board game reviews.